Hi, welcome to CPRS Physical Therapy. I'm Michael Parks with WHP 580. And uh, we are on location at CPRS on Londonderry uh, Road near Central Dauphin East High School. And today we're talking about low back pain uh, with Mark Brown. And also, Mark, uh, we have uh, a special guest, one of our students here and staff members. Yes, this is Laura Riker. She's a third year DPT student from Thomas Jefferson University, just getting ready to graduate and get out on her own in clinical practice. And she's going to be experiencing some low back pain. So uh, the whole purpose of this Facebook Live is to help you all because with the gorgeous weather we've been having lately, a lot of you are out and about and doing so many things, especially during the weekend, maybe possibly overdoing it. Uh, low back pain probably is one of the ser most serious, most popular dilemmas that people deal with. Not always serious, but certainly the most common musculoskeletal reason that people visit a physician or a medical practitioner. And again, probably the best way to go is directly to the physical therapist through direct access. Um, that's the American Medical Association's current recommendation is that you do some preventative or at least conservative care when you have an acute back pain issue. Yeah, we're talking about the importance of doing that because, uh, you know, with, with so many uh, drugs and prescriptions and opioids being prescribed, uh, we want to let you know that there is help and there is help through the use of physical therapy, especially with the great staff here at CPRS Physical Therapy. So first of all, I guess we want to prevent her from having low back pain. So let's talk about some of the ways uh, uh, getting moving, stretching, that's a big key. Okay, ideally just a few exercises. I'm going to have Laura do four basic exercises that I would recommend before you go out do any gardening, yard work, starting the mower, that kind of stuff. If you could, Laura, I'm going to have you stand here. And I just want you to keep your back straight. We'll face this way. Okay. And feet shoulder width apart. And just give me 10 squats up and down, keeping your back straight. This is going to help to warm up the muscles in the legs. We're activating that motion through your hip instead of bending at your back. You're counting those, right? Yeah, that's five. Good. <laughs> this will help, again, turning those muscles on, getting things warmed up, activating before you go to bend and lift or twist with anything. We have those muscles already activated. Now just some high marches. Just pull your knees up high. Give me 10 of those on each side. This gets that hip motion going in the other direction for any bending that you do need to do. You're getting all that motion going as much as you can through the hip, warming up the muscles in the leg. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now standing back bends. Just 10 times. Most of what we do is bending forward. This is just helping to balance the motion in your back. Helps to keep the spinal discs in a good alignment during whatever activities you're doing. You said 10? Yeah. Okay. So you start to feel your body warming up just a little bit even with doing 10 of these. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Now what I want you to do is lift your foot, put your heel out in front of you, keep your back straight, Bend your other knee and lean forward just to feel a pull in the back of that right leg. So you're just kind of stretching that hamstring, maybe just a five second hold, and then give it the other side, same thing. Again, keeping your back straight as you do that. And that'll just put that a little bit of stretch into the hamstrings, getting those muscles warmed up, and then some gentle stretching again, looking at prevention. All right? Let's do a couple more. Now you can feel that. Yeah. So you can feel that moving around. Now that's yeah, it's important. So those muscles start to warm up and activate. Again, this really helps preventatively. Even when you're out in the middle of doing some yard work, intermittently doing some of these standing back bends will help again keep that pressure balanced on the inner spinal discs. Um, okay. I guess probably one of the things I really wondering, why do they have Parks do these? Because he's the one who really needs these. He's the one. <laughs> but uh, the most important part is is, is prevention. Now, Absolutely. but then again, you're always going to try to do more than what you should do, and then you're going to experience some pain and discomfort. And uh, when you do, uh, you can take advantage of direct access. Again, direct access being able to come to folks at CPRS Physical Therapy, because as we always say, you know, time is of the essence when it comes Absolutely. to, to uh, dilemmas like this. And then when you come to uh, CPRS, uh, you would basically go through a basic evaluation and maybe just like walk us through, so in other words, she's now experienced back pain, she calls up, sets up an appointment, she showed up now, what happens uh, next to help her ease the pain? Sure. The very first thing we do is a thorough medical screening. If they have not seen another medical practitioner, we want to make sure that it's not something that they would need a referral outside of physical therapy first. 
And then we would go through a, a more detailed examination specific to the history of their problem, the complaints and pain that they're currently having, and how it responds to movement. So we actually do a movement analysis, we do some strength and flexibility testing. We're looking at the whole person too. We're not just looking at the back even though that's where they may be having the symptoms. Again, your back can refer pain down into your leg, um, all the way to your foot. You can have tingling, numbness, burning. Those tend to be a little bit more severe and more um, significant symptoms, but that again doesn't always warrant a trip outside of the physical therapist. Those are things that we deal with and address in a conservative way, and uh, we would go through that process with every individual and individualize the program based on that. And then when we set up a program for her, and you know, and a lot of you out there watching, you're always kind of fearful of going to a doctor or going in for treatment because it's that fear of the unknown. You never know what's, what, what's, what you're going to have to deal with. So what we're going to probably go through here, maybe just a couple of the techniques and things to help her out. So in other words, we went through her evaluation, we found out what her problem is, we have a plan of action, and uh, let me, what's, what's next? So um, assuming that she has had too much bending and lifting and may have some acute issues of just localized back pain, oftentimes we'll do some manual therapy techniques to help restore the motion and alleviate some of that pain. So Laura, I'm going to have you lay face down on the table here. Okay. I'm going to take the pillow away. There's a hole there so you can breathe. I'm going to come over to this side of the table. Okay, if I lift your shirt up? Yep. All right. So... This is just going to expose her lumbar spine, and I can then assess and, and see how the mobility is. Starting all the way down in her sacrum, I'm just going to get a little bit of pressure through there. Is that okay? Yep. Good. And then I'm assessing her spinal mobility through each segment of her lumbar spine. Assuming I probably already have done this as part of the thorough examination, oftentimes this becomes a treatment technique. So we can start to get the mobility of those spinal segments back. Wherever I find stiffness or hypomobility, I would start to restore some of the movement for her and with her. Are you doing okay with that, Laura? Yep. And one of the things we want to point out, too, is, is during these, these things, when you're an actual patient, not only just for this demonstration, uh, but the staff here at CPRS, you'll do pretty much the same thing. Explain to the patient what you're doing and why. Absolutely. Nothing's going to be a surprise. We always get consent and permission to do anything with the patient before we do it. Um, oftentimes, there's, uh, patients are more than willing to participate. They want to get rid of the pain as quickly as they can. And most of what we do generally feels good. Um, it does help to uh, relieve the pain. Um, oftentimes, if they're having soft tissue spasms, we can get into do some soft tissue work and, and massage, and the deep tissue uh, mobilization helps to reduce a lot of that. Um, there are other incidences where you can have some acute guarding or muscle spasms, or sometimes the spinal mobilization or manipulation may be of value. And I'll just show you a setup and a technique that we would do for that as well. If you could just lay on your left side for me. Is it safe to say that she would probably, he or she would, would experience some relief the first treatment? No, that's, always, this, that's, that's always the goal. One and done. That's always the goal is to uh, get the patient comfortable, to try to reduce the pain and get them moving in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. We do educate them on how they should be doing things at home. What's the proper way to sit? What's the best way to sleep? What's the best way to lift? Get your laundry, get the things that you need to do through your normal daily activities protecting your spine from further injury. Those are also good advice pieces on trying to prevent um, future episodes of back pain, things that they should follow through with, um, just as a preventative maintenance kind of procedure after they've resolved this episode of issues. Okay? So I'm going to have you move forward towards me until you get to my fist here. Good. So stay nice and close. Good. So I'm going to be pretty close to you here. Are you okay with that? Yep. All right. We always say this is not the middle school dance. This is more close to the senior prom. Okay, really <laughs> close here. Okay. So I would just do some spinal mobility assessment for here. And I'm just trying to set up a specific segmental mobilization for Laura. I want you to straighten your lower leg. Good. All right. Give me your arm. Hold on to my arm. I'm going to pull you up here. Good. What do you feel, Laura? Just a stretch. Good. Your back just cracked already. Yep. So sometimes that happens, just setting the patient up for that technique. So um, that crack or pop oftentimes helps to give the pressure release that's necessary to help to reduce some of the guarding and the muscle spasms in that local area. I'm just going to set you up here anyway, even though you're already cracked, and take you through just this movement here. Good. 
I can do some just gentle mobilizations, trying to work on that spine wherever she has isolated pain or restricted mobility. Uh, we're not working through pain or spasm. This is to help to relieve that muscle spasm and reduce any of the acute problem. If necessary, I would do a thrust mobilization technique. You okay if I go ahead and give that a little shove? Mm -hmm. Just like that. <laughs> wow. Well. No. You okay? Yeah. All right. She feels so much better. <laughs> Have you ever experienced any low back pain at all? No. Well, God bless you. <laughs> it may come sooner or later. Uh, the most important thing is is that you know the reason why we're doing these these videos and these Facebook Live is to show you if you are experiencing low back pain. You know. It's, we were, you, you can pop all the pills you want, but why find out what to cause, find a, you know, a cure and some help and hope? Because one of the great things about CPRS is that after the treatment, as Mark mentioned, he'll show you and they will show you the exercises and the techniques that you can do these on your own to help prevent further cases and also help to ease the pain. So, you know, if, hey, if you're out there and you're moving stuff around and all of a sudden you feel like a little tinge and you feel some pain, then you've been already educated and you can do a stretch and a movement around to help with you and your lower back pain. Um, find out more. There's a CPRS location nearest you. Go to our website, cprsweb.com, and uh, stay tuned to uh, Facebook and Facebook Live. Uh, the folks here will be doing uh, you know, more of these. Uh, and if you have any comments or questions, please you know, put them down and say, hey, uh, could you possibly do a, a, a video on this ailment or illness? And uh, we'll try to address those as well. So, Mark, Laura, thank you so much. And, again, thanks for tuning in on Facebook Live. I'm Michael Parks, and uh, this is CPRS Physical Therapy on Facebook Live.